Welcome everyone, Adam here at ECP and today I'm going to be fitting my air vents to the ST. Right everyone, what we've got here is everything that you should need to uh, fit the air vents to your bonnet. Obviously we've got the air vents, uh, they cost me £16 off eBay, I will post a link in the description so you can go and purchase them yourself. The templates that come with the air vents. Now I'll point out that the inside line is the cutting line. So out of all the template, that is your cutting line, the inside. So that's where you want to cut on your car. Uh, angle grinder with cutting blades. Make sure it's a cutting disc, sorry. Not a grinding disc, you need the cutting discs. Reciprocating saw, now you can use either. It's personal preference, that's why I've got both here. I'm not sure which one I want to use yet, uh, but it's down to your own decision. A drill with a metal, drill piece, cut or drilling into metal, tiger seal. Uh, as stated in my other video where I fitted the rear diffuser, there are other options uh, to stick the air vents on or to stick the rear diffuser on. It's down to personal preference. I just chose tiger seal because whenever I Google researched it on forums, that was the most popular one that was came up. So if that's the most popular one, pop the most popular one that came up, that's the one I chose. Obviously a pencil for marking, and masking tape. I believe that it will be everything you need. Obviously, safety goggles and a sheet or something to cover the uh, to cover the engine bay. So always cover your engine bay when you start. Let's get to it. Right, everyone. After you remove the cover, if you want, give it a little bit of clean like I've already done. I've already marked out one template and got it in place. And how I did that was as it goes. If it doesn't make any sense, I do apologise. I've got a mark from one end to the other with a centre piece. Same on the opposite side and drew a straight line. So how I've got it is on the wider side I've got 5 centimetres, short side I've got 3.5 centimetres. And what we want to do is repeat the process on the bonnet. As you can see on the bonnet, they have already got the panels exactly in place where you want to stick the air vent. Angle and shape are already there. All you need to do is repeat what you did on the template, mark across, measure across, mark the centre piece, mark across again, mark the centre piece, and draw a straight line. And then what I did was from top and bottom, mark up and down three centimetres, and mark it off with a pencil. Then on your template, we've already marked off the middle from the template, marry it up on the bonnet and that should leave you with a symmetrical square template cut out on both sides. Now if anyone else watching this has done it a different way or you've got a better idea please comment below, leave your remarks, let me know and let the world know. Right everyone, this is the point where there's no going back so as long as you're happy with the measurements you have put on then it's just a case of cutting out. Now, what I've decided to use is the drill and a reciprocating saw. Uh, you can't go in with an angle grinder. It's going straight and cut, boom, done. But what that will do is more than likely burn your paintwork. Yes, it will be covered by the air vent, but I personally don't want to burn the paint in case the burn marks, scorch marks go a little bit further than you want. Uh, and the angle grinder, with all the sparks everywhere, it's just a little bit more dangerous. So I've used a drill and a metal drill piece. I've made a couple of slots so I can fit the reciprocating saw in and just go across, up, across and down, done. Nice clearing line, safer than using an angle grinder. Yes, still use safety goggles and gloves where preferable, but the decision is down to you guys. Either way, definitely cover up your engine bay because there's loads of swarf don't want that going in your car and your engine bay or even if it's the angle grinder you don't want sparks going down there where there's all fuel so definitely cover everything up take your time uh, if you are doing it my way the other benefit is you know where you're cutting so you can put masking tape just to try to limit any chipping and any damage to your paint work where you don't want it to, to happen so next stage get the reciprocating sort and cut it out. 
There we go, everyone. That's the vent cut out. Uh, didn't go too bad. Pretty relatively straight. They're not not 100 percent accurate. I mean, I went a little bit further there, a little bit further there, slightly wiggly, but it's no drama because on the vents you've got quite a lot of overhang, so you won't see it. Uh, so that's a good thing. Now, if you ask me if I was going to do it again. I would say you could do it with a drill. Without the hassle of using an angle grinder or a receptating saw, if you're not comfortable about using one of them, if you get a nice sharp new drill bit and just drilled a hole all the way down, overlapping each other all the way around, you could then pop it out and just use a, uh, a file and file it all down nice and straight. So that is an alternative if you're not too comfortable with using power tools. It can definitely be done with a drill. I'd probably use a drill next time. Uh, I'll point this out if you are going to use either an angle grinder or a receptacle saw, because it's thin. And when you start going through it a lot, you get a lot of vibration and it is hard to see the line. So maybe do a bit at a time, work your way around carefully and it will vibrate and shake very much. So it is difficult, but as long as you're relatively close to the line that you've marked out, uh, there's no drama. So once you've done that, it's very important to get file and file the edges down so you don't have a sharp lip because uh, you do have the you, know, you, you can easily cut yourself it'd be like a knife so yeah file it all down then treat the edges i.e where there's bare metal from where you've cut get some hammerite some sort of paint treatment and just dab all over the bare metal to prevent rust because any moisture any water gets in there through the sealant uh, all you're going to do is get rust around there, it's going to cause problems down further down the line. So right, let's get the vents glued in place. There we are guys, there's a the finished product. Uh, not too shabby at all, I'm quite happy at the, uh, the finished product. Uh, I must admit though, actually getting them uh, sat correctly with the shape of the bonnet is quite difficult. Because the actual vents themselves are straight and level, where the bonnet is curved. So before you actually try to set them in place, it's advisable to have something weighted that you can sit on top to hold them in the right position. And bear in mind that you're gonna have to leave it 24 hours as well. So I just that's something to, uh, you know, something to think about before you you know you, you put all the tiger seal on and stick them in place. I think I'll oh, just leave it. The tiger seal won't bond straight away. It takes 24 hours to cure, so you need to have something weighted on top to hold them in place. Uh, so you know, so it does the job properly. But yeah, so I'm happy at that. Uh, on to the next mod. What will that be? I don't know yet. It's what I can afford. Yeah, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, like it. And if you want to see more, check out my other ones. I've got a few more videos on my channel and there will be more going up uh, quite regularly for every single thing I do to my car, whether it be a mod or repairing it. I will do a video on it and how I did it as well. So if it helps you or anyone else watching this, then great. Uh, but till then, everyone, thank you.